Splatoon 3 and honestly the franchise in general is full of so many cool secrets and hidden details, the developers have honestly put a lot of time and attention into every little aspect of the game, and thankfully a lot of you have noticed some of the coolest secrets that the game has to offer. I made a YouTube post not too long ago asking you to share some of the secrets and hidden details that you noticed, so I'm going to be going over 8 of those in this video. For this video, we're going to be focusing primarily on secrets outside of the story mode. There might be some connections to the story, but generally speaking, most of these you will encounter outside of Alterna. So let's check out some of these Splatoon 3 secrets that you might not know about. Starting us off, Saxel the Trickster says, If you finish the story mode, the radio in Grisco changes from a bear holding a salmon in its mouth to a salmon holding a bear in its mouth. Pretty cool little change. So this is one I actually did know about, and I believe the salmon is technically the big form of Little Buddy as far as I'm aware. I really like that the story mode does affect some things outside of that section of the game. I think that is really cool, honestly. And even though I said I won't be focusing on story mode related things in this video, this is one that I had to include because it is such a cool little change. I honestly wish there were more things that you could do to change the world permanently like this. It feels like a lot of Incopolis and such is too static, and I'd love to see even more changes. Who knows what the future DLCs may bring in terms of this though, there's a lot of potential. Key Otter says, if you stand in front of the train station in Incopolis for a bit, whenever a train arrives and opens its doors, it plays a portion of Calamari Incantation in the digital chime sound. This is a really neat detail that I would have never noticed myself, so I'm really happy they pointed this one out. We tend to hear Calamari Incantation in a lot of different places throughout the game. You can even hear Little Buddy sing it at some points as well, which is absolutely adorable. So it's really cool to me that this song is such a big part of Splatoon and you can find it in all kinds of different places, showing just how beloved it is even in the in-game universe. Definitely let me know in the comment section down below if you've heard little snippets of it anywhere else in the game, as I feel like there could be more examples of this that people just haven't noticed yet. SHXNON says, The lockers play different sound effects when you open slash close them depending on the material they're made of. For example, the wooden ones, the shabby ones. Once again, this is something I would have never noticed, but it is a really cool little detail. I also saw someone point out that the sound effect for opening the locker sounds like the one from Happy Home Paradise for Animal Crossing New Horizons, and as you may know, the development teams are shared between the two games, so it makes sense that they would put in little details like this. I mean, the locker's feature literally feels like something out of Animal Crossing New Horizons, honestly. It's definitely inspired at the very least, I'm sure. So it makes sense that some of these little details that you would kind of find in Animal Crossing are also shared over here in Splatoon 3 as well. Especially the different sound effects for opening different types of lockers and such. That is such something you would see in Animal Crossing New Horizons. So I'm really glad they've added details like this to Splatoon 3 as well, as honestly, it makes such a big difference. Fangs of Mayhem says, Absolutely love that throwing a curling bomb and not moving right after will make them go yes when it explodes. It's really adorable. They don't actually say yes or anything, but they sure look happy. So I believe this happens with a lot of the other bombs that don't explode right away, which is definitely a really cool little detail. You probably wouldn't notice this too much because of how much you're moving around in the battle modes of the game. So I guess this is something you could really see for yourself in the training room if you wanted to. I really appreciate the fact that they've put things like this into the game despite the fact that so many people won't even notice them because of how fast paced the battles are. It really shows to me just how much love and care they've put into this game overall which is something that makes me really happy. It does make me wonder if there are any other types of weapons in the game where something similar like this happens and we just never notice because we're always going too fast through the battles. Irene Shelton says, Little Buddy's Hiding Locations. The wiki has a whole list, but these are the ones that come to mind, Splatsville only, sleeping behind merch, chilling near the story mode great, vibing in the unreachable cafe above Deep Cut Studio, vibing in the stool slash pole just outside of Crust Station Hotlantis respectively. So yes, Little Buddy can appear in so many different places, and it's just a fun little hide and seek game to see exactly where he is this particular day. I've noticed him in some really interesting locations in Incopolis. For example, he can appear right at the top of the very tower, which is absolutely crazy to me. He can appear inside of the lobby as well. And not to mention the fact that you can see him right outside of the Squid Sisters, sort of looking in and fanning over them, which is something that I find to be absolutely adorable. He may be little buddy, but he is their biggest fan, believe me. 
There are so many different locations, and I hope in future updates they add even more honestly, because this is such an adorable part of the game. And I really wish we could do more with Little Buddy each day, just outside of the story mode. I don't know in what particular that would be, but I'm sure there are lots of ideas they could come up with to make even more use out of Little Buddy, because I just love this character. Definitely let me know in the comments section down below which other places you've noticed Little Buddy at, I would love to hear what you have to say. Bright Karma says, At the snack bar in the lobby room there are logos for Mastercard, Visa and American Express. Even after the end of the world, credit cards still exist. And this is an incredibly cool detail. It's interesting though because I wonder which characters are actually using credit cards. It's not something we see very often. It's unknown how our character really carries around all of their cash as far as I'm aware. They just kind of have it on them. Maybe our character does have a credit card and they get it out every time they're shopping at the shops. Who knows honestly, but it's still a little bit worrying that we have credit scores seemingly in the Splatoon universe. Something that our characters would have to worry about on top of everything else that is going on. Doki says, if you go into the Grizzco Industries building in Incopolis and then you look right there, there should be a TV showing security footage of Splatsville. This just goes to show once again that Mr. Grizz is always watching us and he is keeping tracks on everything we do in the city. I really love that Mr. Grizz got such a big role in Splatoon 3 and it makes me wonder what they will do with him in the future. Especially now that we have big runs and such, Mr. Grizz is kind of on a high taking down so many Salmonids and dangerous threats and such. So I'm really curious to see exactly what kind of role Mr. Grizz will have in the future of Splatoon 3, if we see even more of him in the DLC and such, or just what role he'll have in general in the future of the franchise. Kid Kite says, once you finish story mode, Little Judd is wearing a headset and microphone heavily suggesting they are now running some things behind the scenes. So I've definitely seen and heard a lot about this. A lot of you suggested things about Little Judd. And it's true, there is some speculation that Little Judd is the evil mastermind of the game, and we're going to see him as the villain of Splatoon 4, whenever that may be. I honestly don't know, but there's definitely something very sus about Little Judd at the moment. Something very suspicious is going on with them. So we just have to keep our eye out and watch them very carefully. But let me know in the comments section down below what Splatoon 3 secrets and hidden details you've noticed I would love to hear. If you made it to the end then be sure to comment secret gang down below so I know you did. If you enjoyed be sure to leave a like and if you haven't already consider subscribing and turning on channel notifications for more. If you want to support my content consider becoming a member by clicking the join button or the link in the description. You can get some exclusive perks for doing so like emojis, a badge by your name and you even get featured at the end of my videos.